What's going on, Jerome's Beautiful Tuesday. Birds are tripping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. So lots of things going on. NFL owners being going down uh, and scenic. Orlando, right meow. Uh, Vikes fan page uh, compiled this. So Vikings co-owner Mark Wilf uh, was uh, on with NFL Network talking about the quarterback situation for the Vikings. Quote, we love Sam Darnold, but when it comes to the quarterback position, it is critical. We have a plan. Sam is a part of it, and we are excited to have two first-round picks to provide flexibility. Now, the term flexibility, it's something that Kevin O'Connell brought up a lot during his NFL Network interview, uh, as well as Quasey has mentioned it uh, throughout interviews as well. So, it, so that's the thing about ownership, the GM and head coach. I feel like once they sync up, they are in lockstep. They get their story straight. It's like last off season when all three of them were going on the media and you know talked about how you know, you know we're going to enjoy Kirk Cousins this year. Then everything will just play out as it is. So I do like that the Vikings are in lockstep. Um, I, no, I don't make anything of Kevin O'Connell. You know all, all the stories that he did want Kirk Cousins back because I don't think that that was a I don't think that was a state secret. I don't think it took the deep state to bring that out. So I think that you know, uh, Kevin O'Connell wanted Kirk back, but the uh, the money didn't make sense. Atlanta definitely threw the bag at at at, uh, at Kurt, and it sort of is what it is. But uh, I also you can tell like body language wise, like Mark Wilf, like he's pretty excited about what, what's going to happen. Uh, and uh, I think the Vikings plan. They have Darnold in their back pocket. They could trade up. Maybe uh, quasi has got a couple of deals in place. Oh look. Wink nudge uh, for a potential move up, or the Vikings can stick and pick. They can maneuver, then get Penix and Nix and Rattler. So, future is kind of bright. Not going to lie. We're kind of like uh, the way the Vikings are operating this offseason. Speaking of Kurt Cousins, so Arthur Blank also at the NFL owners meeting, it says that he doesn't believe that the Falcons tampered with Kirk Cousins. This is from ESPN. The tampering deal, we obviously don't believe we tampered, and we shared all the information with the league, Blank said at the NFL's annual meeting Monday, and they'll review the process and the facts, and they are in the middle of doing that, and whatever the result is, we'll deal with it. So I feel like Blank is sort of resigned <laughs> that the Falcons might, might get spanked a little bit. And the whole thing is we don't believe we tampered, uh, it's like when, when, uh, you, uh, someone uploads a clip from a movie on the old YouTubes It's like no copyright intended. Ah, okay. Ah, ah, okay. But the whole thing is cousins, the cousin contract came together very quickly, especially a guy that, uh, you, you know, you want to check out that Achilles, right? Uh, and the whole thing about it is cousins admitting that he'd met with the the sports staff he met with the trainers he met with the pr staff because that's important now he initially said meeting and then he backtracked and said talk to talk to is still a violation because the legal tampering period is for agent and team only so the fact that he even if he just called the trainer on the phone uh or the pr team on the phone which is important because kurt really likes public relations that's still a violation if they met in person especially the trainer that's like biblically bad. Like there, there's gonna be locusts and there's gonna be uh, I don't know what what, what what are the other plagues? I don't know locusts like like some ass is gonna die. I, as a kid, I always liked in the Bible when they said ass. I was like, oh, ass, 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 ass. That's right. Uh, but the whole I was I was just a dream as a kid in Sunday school. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I think that Arthur Blank realizes that they're probably gonna get smacked. Plus, also if you look around taking the temperature of some uh falcons fans on the old social medias the, they're like pump the brakes on mock, dra mock drafts we might lose a couple picks <laughs> it happens it's all for kurt hmm. also uh jp finlay uh ha had a great line i love this one a uh, tremendous line from uh, kevin seifert who's not carl gerbschmidt uh he did up a um, you know, piece talk about kurt kurt cousins departure moved to atlanta quote he won a minute of soda to show him they wanted him and his love language is guaranteed money <laughs> In fairness, I mean, my, my love language is also guaranteed money. Put a little something in the Venmo. <laughs> but that that's great. Uh, but speaking of picks, so and also speaking of Kurt Pitts, so the official details of Shaq Griffin's one-year deal came in. Uh, he's getting $4.55 million this year with some incentives. Now, that was enough to qualify and... You know, sort, sort of cross off the third round pick uh, that is projected to be incoming for, from Daniil Hunter signing with the Texans. Uh, but like I said, these are projections over the cap. Uh, they're, they're pretty damn good about it. But, you know, the whole thing is to, you know, comp picks are nice, but don't, 
don't let it impact your free agency strategy, which I don't know. Would you have passed on uh, signing uh, you know, Grenard or Van Ginkle because of a third round pick, maybe a fourth round pick? I don't know. I don't know, man. But, uh, you know, the things could surprise too. And maybe Ole Udo was signed with the Saints for, I don't know, like a decent amount of money. Uh, or Dalton Reiser could sign somewhere else before the, the comp window closes, which is generally a week after the draft. So, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Feeney, w- once his details get in there, uh, he shouldn't count into the comp pick formula. So uh, w- w- we'll see. Uh, w- we'll see what happens there. Also, we'll see who the quarterback is going to be. Now, uh, Ka Rudolph Ka was up with, with the, the legendary Kay Adams. Love me some Kay Adams. Uh, and uh, this is from her show. Uh, which quarterback in the draft is the best fit for the Vikings? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, quote, this is what Rudy said. A rookie quarterback is not going to be able to come in and operate this Kevin O'Connell-style offense. Uh, there is so much put on the quarterback in Minnesota. There is no way that you can have that volume on a rookie to play that position. Now, it's important to note that Rudy and Kevin O'Connell didn't have any crossover. Like Rudy was let go uh, as uh, O'Connell and Quasey were coming in. Then Rudy signed with the Giants and then spent uh, you know, some, some time with the Buccaneers as well. Uh, so like he, he doesn't have like one for one you know knowledge of the Kevin O'Connell offense. But uh, of course, as a football guy, like he, he can see that. Uh, and the offense can be complex, and the offense does put a lot on the quarterback's shoulders, and also as evidenced by the Gong Show at QB last year, uh, after Kurt got injured. So yeah, I, I I do expect Sam Darnold to probably come out of the gate starting, uh, even if the Vikings trade up heaven and earth up to three or maybe even two, uh, and get McCarthy or May or Daniels, or if they uh, swing around and get Penix, Nix, Rattler, whoever, uh, I actually do expect Sam Darnold to be starting and not just be given the spot, but to have earned it. And and the rookie, no matter who comes in, like Kevin O'Connell very much is a process guy, and he wants to give this rookie the best chance to succeed. And, yeah, you look at Stroud coming in. He did great. Yeah, you look at some some of these guys who hit the ground running. That's fantastic. But also you've seen rookies that come in when they're not ready, and it can just completely destroy confidence and just the swagger that a quarterback needs to have, and they aren't ready. All right, and uh, I think that Rudy is spot on in the spot where I, I don't think that the rookie, even if uh, uh, the rookie ends up costing three first round picks, is going to start right away. Hmm. Uh, something that the NFL is doing uh, right now is the international pro- uh, gl- global markets program. So they started this was the last year or two years ago. It doesn't matter. But uh, basically, they're trying to expand internationally, and certain teams have certain you know marketing areas where you know they can try and grow and show the game. Uh, the Vikings have Canada whatever uh as well as uh united kingdom which i don't know man like do they understand the history of the vikings and england and the united kingdom i don't know that doesn't matter but uh the vikings they didn't add any new territory but the nfl has expanded into a couple a couple of extra countries which is great love to grow grow the game uh hopefully they oh so a lot of the rest of the world plays rugby Hopefully they can bring in uh, the the safer rugby tackles as opposed to the the swivel hip drop, please. Uh, but w- what's interesting is the country of Ghana. All right, so uh, th- that territory goes to the Eagles, and you're thinking, nah, nah. Now, now what's interesting is that the Minnesota Vikings, literally, literally, their general manager is of Ghanaian descent, and also the Vikings third round pick. Uh, from 2022, Brian Osawan. Uh, hopefully, he can stay healthy. I think that he can be a, a big-time impact player, the pride of Oklahoma. He's also of Ghanaian descent. All right? And also, they, they both speak one of the official languages uh, of Ghana. So, this would have been a perfect international marketing opportunity. Uh, again, you have a third-round linebacker. And again, you have literally the general manager of one of the franchises, are Ghana, uh, Ghanaian. And you're just like, hey, Ghana. Hope you like cheesesteaks. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, the, the NFL is very good uh, at these at, at trying to grow the game internationally. You know, they're taking a big time page from the NBA playbook. But uh, this seems like an unforced error. Like, I, I, it's like if the Vikings, if the Vikings didn't get Germany and, and Moritz Bering was still on, on the rooster. It's ridiculous. It's kind of crazy, man. Hmm. Uh, but also kind of crazy. And also fabulous. Uh, Cam Akers, uh, the pride of Florida State, who came over via trade from the, uh, from the Rams last year. Uh, so popped his Achilles, second Achilles injury of his very young career. And 
sort of like J.K. Dobbins, where you know, coming off of catastrophic injuries and like the talent is obviously there, and he's out there, he's rehabbing, he's running routes. Uh, looks like that's in the great state of Minnesota. So he's currently not under contract. Now, I, I like Cam Akers a lot. And he is only 24, going to be 25 in June. And he did have a couple of decent rushing games last year where, I mean, Madison started out very slow last year. And, oh, by the way, look at that Rams game. So week one at Seattle, 22 carries for 29 yards. (laughs) He had a solid 1.3 yards per carry. Hey, at least he got a tutty. I mean, I I guess that's why Kieran Williams took over. Anyways, uh, but the whole thing about Cam Akers is that, uh, you know, he did find the end zone. He did have a couple of nice games uh, rushing for the Vikings. Like he was he was a nice change of pace for a Madison who, who was struggling, uh, you know, throughout the 2023 campaign. But I don't know, man, like with the Achilles, it, it would have to be a spot where, you know, have the trainers and medical staff take a look right before training camp. If he's cleared. Maybe. And if the Vikings have an open 90-man roster spot, maybe. But we're talking league minimum, nothing guaranteed, and go from there. All right. Or it might even be a spot where Cam Akers uh, isn't on a 90-man throughout training camp. And maybe during the season, once he's got even more time to heal up, maybe a team takes a shot at him. Maybe the Vikings do. Maybe the Vikings, you know, halfway through the season, uh, recheck him out again and add him to the practice squad or something. But I'm rooting for him. Uh, I, I do love me some Cam Akers. Uh, next. So the Vikings are losing one of their home games over to England again. Again. Uh, but now the stadium is set. Uh, Burt Breer, go. Oh, but Burt Breer is just loving the, the Harbaugh and J.J. McCarthy discourse because he's a, he's a huge Buckeye fan. Uh, International Series update. The Vikings and Bears will host games at Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium because they can't get a corporate sponsor. Hmm. Uh, and the Jaguars will have their Wembley game and the Panthers will be at home. Will be the home team for a game in Munich in 2024. And now, I mean, last time the Vikings played uh, at, at Tottenham, actually it was the first time that they played at Tottenham, uh, they had a nice win over the Saints. Uh, that was the double doink, well, no, single doink game at, at the end. Also, that was the game where Marcus Davenport recorded his half sack for the 2022 season. On Kirk Cousins. Cool. Uh, but also, that was a game where Justin Jefferson absolutely sunned Marshawn Lattimore, at which Burt Breer, Ohio State alum, I'm sure was really happy about that. But, I mean, the Vikings, I mean, the London games are, are kind of neat, uh, considering c- considering heading over, over there once the schedule comes out. I uh, would love to meet up with some UK Jeromes. Uh, but also, the, I mean, the Vikings are 3-0 uh, o- over in London. So, initially, uh, so... In 2013, the first game was at Wembley against the Steelers. I remember both teams were 0-3. And it's just like, here you go, England. That's what you get for tax and tea. Uh, And then 2017, uh, it was at Twickenham Stadium. I think I nailed that. Uh, So, yeah, the English pronunciations are weird. So it's Twickenham, probably. Probably. Uh, Or, as us Americans would say, Twickenham. Twickenham. Actually, Twickenham sounds good. Uh, uh, give me a pound of the, the smoked uh, Gouda and uh, a pound of the Twickenham. There you go. Uh, the Vikings uh, put the bang thing on the Browns. Uh, also, that was the game where Everson got hurt on like the last play of the game in complete garbage time, and I was really pissed off about that. Uh, and then uh, the Vikings, you know, like we mentioned, won last year. So, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll make it 4-0. and They are truly UK's team, which is kind of funny, man. Uh, also kind of funny, is they're expanding hard knocks, or they want to, at, at least. Uh, Ari Maryov, go. Uh, NFL owners are expected to vote on expanding the in-season version of hard knocks from featuring just one team to having an entire four-team division uh, per Sports Business Journal. So last year, uh, in-season was the Dolphins. And I actually do, I do like hard knocks. And I think they should lift the restrictions of, well, if you miss the playoffs two years in a row or if you have a new head coach, just lift it. I mean, the hard knocks... You're trying to sell the game, and Hard Knocks is a great insight. And I, I know that coaches are very paranoid. It's like, oh, it's going to take away from our preparation. Oh, please, please. Plus, I mean, the, the teams in-house have, like the Vikings have Vikings Entertainment Network. Other teams have uh, in-house production uh, teams. And, I mean, there's cameras around all the time. It, it doesn't really take away uh, that much. And plus, they're not really intrusive because – like last, I mean, when they did all Amazon All or Nothing, 
or when they did Hard Knocks in season, if you didn't announce who the team was, which I don't think uh, All or Nothing announced who the team was, like you, you couldn't tell. I mean, yeah, because there's cameras all over the place all, all the time, and people just know, right? So uh, I don't think it's that intrusive, but it gives great content. I, I absolutely love it, uh, and I, I want the Vikings to be on it because I, I want all the storylines. I want everything. I can't wait till uh, JJ's Netflix uh, receiver documentary comes out. Uh, well, I'm only going to watch his parts. Amon Ram, I'm going to fast forward through because all he's going to talk about is the, the wide receiver draft ahead of him. Uh, George Kittle probably only going to talk about University of Iowa or pro wrestling or something like that. Uh, Debo is probably going to talk about I should be paid as a receiver, not a running back. I don't know. I don't know. And Devontae Adams will probably just talk about how um, – I don't know. Who, who knows what? Oh, Devontae Adams probably just talk about Derek Carr. So th- th- there you go. But uh, yeah, I-, I would love to see the Vikings on Hard Knocks in season. It, it would be fantastic. Lastly, uh, so CBS Sports, uh, Garrett Podol, uh tossing out free agency grades. The Vikings check in at a C minus. Baloney. Baloney. Now, I-, I know what he's probably going to say. Didn't even pull up the article, but it's probably going to say losing Kirk Cousins and losing to Daniel Hunter and Vikings building for the future. And I love and adore the contracts that they gave to John Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle, Blake Cashman outside. How about that? Uh, I, I think that the – hell, even Sam Darnold. Like, yeah, Sam Darnold's $10 million, That means there was competition for his services. Uh, Denver was definitely in, in on Darnold, maybe even the Giants. So I, I, I'm in. I'm in with what Quasi and the Vikings are doing. Uh, now, after three off seasons of free agency, you're starting to see the forest through the trees. Uh, Quasi and Brzezinski have been cleaning up a lot of those older veteran contracts and bringing in their own guys. They're going to have all the cap space. They're going to build around Jefferson. They're in the driver's seat for uh, drafting the quarterback of the future. I love what the Vikings have done in free agency uh, this off season. So uh, there you go. That's uh, Vikings Tuesday news dump. Nailed it. Uh, you guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.